Hey guys, so today we're gonna to talk about everything that's wrong with my Cayenne. Uh, this is my 2008 Porsche Cayenne on 33s. Uh, I'll be upgrading to 35s very soon, but I wanna make a video documenting everything that is currently wrong with the car, uh, things that I plan to fix, stuff like that. Uh, so anybody else that has the same problems, uh, I feel your pain. These cars do sometimes get issues. So first up on the list of problems is my headlights. Uh, it's a major concern at night. The headlight level sensors just don't work the best. So the headlights go maybe 15 to 20 feet in front of me and just point like straight at the ground. So at night I basically have to drive with my brights on or my light bar. So usually, uh, unless I'm on the highway or something, it is a concern. So second on the list is gonna be the light bar. Um, I've had this light bar mounted since March and it's already getting condensation in there. Um, I'm hopefully upgrading light bars to something else different but this is like a $350 like Chinese light bar. Uh, it's sold by Eurowise. Uh, yeah, I just need something better. So problem number three is gonna be the headlights need to be refinished. Uh, there's like some fading and cracking on them. And then also like the sun is just damaging them. Uh, it's hard to clean these up really well, but I plan to uh, repolish them and then just add a protective film over them. So that should keep them looking nice for a long time. Okay, so for the paint of the vehicle, um, there are a couple of problem areas. The car was in an accident before, before my ownership, but the driver's fender was replaced and then repainted. Uh, headlight was replaced. That didn't get coated ever, uh, but that's already taken care of. And then, so when they replaced the fender, they blended into the driver's door, probably right about here or so. And then they re-cleared the whole door, but the clear coat is failing. And just by power washing, it's coming off here on this part, uh, they bondoed this very terribly. Uh, I think that's plastic, so I don't know why they didn't just replace it. And then also I was power washing and uh, the paint just completely came off down to bare metal right here. So those are something that needs to be addressed uh, unless I go with vinyl wrap in the future. <clears throat> so problem number five is gonna be the crack in my windshield that I have coming from here all the way down. Luckily it doesn't spread very far across the windshield or anything but that happened when I first got the light bar installed and I was like trying to dig up this trim piece right here and I just happened to nick the windshield barely with a flathead screwdriver and then the crack started and just eventually spread down. So again with the roof rack, when I first installed this, I didn't know it was gonna rub on the car. So if I bring this too far out, it wobbles in the wind, but if I have it connected to the car, it still vibrates and moves around a little bit. Um, I think Prince U racks have, uh, have prevented this, but it rests on the car and the little vibrations took the paint down to bare metal on the top of the roof. So I've put like about 10 layers of vinyl wrap down uh, in little strips to prevent it. But if you're gonna get this roof rack, like you need to put clear brow down or something or uh, figure out what you're gonna do. So that's another just small issue. So I've recently had some issues with the car coming off alignment. Uh, this has been a problem basically since the car was first lifted. Porsche from the factory allows the subframe to kind of shift around a little bit so that you're able to uh, really dial in your alignment. So the subframe bolts, there's like a little pocket around them where the subframe can shift around. Uh, not a huge problem when you're just driving the car on the road and you're not gonna be hitting like huge rocks, but when you're off road, your subframe's shifting around and stuff. So that has been a problem. Uh, I now have Eurowise centering sleeves, so I'm gonna install those soon and I hopefully that get, gets rid of the issue. But I've spent maybe a thousand dollars in alignments since I got this car in February of 2021. <sighs> kind of a pain in the ass. So I hadn't had the car for too long before I got the lift kit and everything on, but since then I've had a lot of noise come from like the front right of the car, like some popping and stuff, and I Think that I've ruled out axles, I've ruled out like bearings, bushings, so I'm not at all sure what it could be. But that's been a recurring issue. And then with the Eurowise control arms uh, being tubular and like having a bearing in there, they kind of make a little bit of noise if they're not greased. So almost every time or like every few times they go off road, uh, I wash the suspension down and then I re grease it and we're basically good to go, but that's been a recurring issue. So I also have a problem with my exhaust. They were getting pinched up against the subframe, so I cut it off right before the subframe. Uh, I then took my car to a local Salt Lake City shop. I dropped it off for a week while I was in South Carolina, 
and I expected them to have like a tubular rear bumper done and then also side exit exhaust or center exit or however they were going to do it. I uh, returned from South Carolina and they hadn't done any of it. Uh, all they did was raise the hitch like four inches. Um, I paid $300. Uh, but yeah, I took my car back because I don't feel like they were confident in, uh, in their work and I don't feel like they were competent enough to do what I really wanted. So now, uh, now we wait until I can find a shop that can do what I want them to do. If you have recommendations, please leave them in the comments. Another issue that I've had since I lifted this car was with my wheels. So I've always had a slight vibration. Uh, the first set of tires I ever got were 34 inch Wild Peak AT3s and I could not get rid of the vibration, like I just was not happy, and I went back to the tire shop repeatedly thinking that it was just the wheel balancing. So they eventually took those tires back, and then I got the 33 inch trail grapplers. So I've been using these for however long, but since I've had the wheels, I had never taken them off myself. From then until now, yesterday I took it off for the first time to like make some clearance for the 35s that I'm gonna get, but out of 10 shops plus that have had my wheels off of this car, nobody ever noticed that I'm using ball seat lug bolts in a conical wheel. So I've ordered those, this should be here in a couple days, but that may have been the source of my vibration. The wheels are still hub centric and I still have like hub centering rings, but that's been an issue that I've had since the beginning. So I'm hoping that solves it. <clears throat> So as for the engine, um, I haven't had too many problems, but I've babied this thing. I've done every maintenance item that you can possibly take care of on this car. From the starter to water pump, thermostat, water pump pulley, serpentine belt, spark plugs, coil packs, air filters, I've cleaned the O2 sensors, basically everything that you can do. I've flushed the coolant, like I've legitimately taken such great care of this car. But the engine burns oil, um, probably about a quart every 1,500 or 2,000 miles. I know that's kind of what this is rated around, but I feel like it's faster than what's normal. Um, I'm a little bit afraid of like cylinder bore scoring, so eventually I'll get a stethoscope in there, but that's an issue that I've had. Um, when I'm off-roading or like going uphill in a low gear or something or like just straining the engine for a little while, the temperature gauge will run up to about three quarters of the temp or three quarters of the gauge. So I think that's around like 240 degrees or something. I think middle is like 210. Uh, but yeah, that's been a constant issue. I don't think it really is going to damage the engine. I think it's totally fine to go up to three quarters because it, it never go it never goes past it. The one time it did go past it a little bit, the coolant expansion tank blew, and so I just replaced it, flushed everything, and then it was good to go. But I've had that issue with the engine. So I've recently had the check engine light come on for the O2 sensor pretty frequently. Um, that's something that I just keep clearing, but that is an issue that I have. Maybe it's from burning oil, maybe the catalytic converter is going bad, but that's something we gotta deal with. And last but not least, uh, the weirdest problem that I've had, so I replaced the starter, because at one time it was bad and the car just would not turn over. But I replaced the starter, everything went well for like a week, but the starter now has another weird issue. So it's hard to capture on video, uh, if I can, I'll include it in this video. But uh, I think I need to replace the starter again. It's a Bosch starter. I got it from FCP, so there's a full, there's a lifetime warranty on it. But it's the seven hours of work-ish to get in there and replace it. Uh, you don't have to take the quilt lines or anything off, but still just a pain in the butt. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Please help me go on more adventures by watching this video, watching the ads, and uh, helping me out. So that's everything that's currently wrong with my Cayenne. I'm sure there'll be more stuff in the future, but uh, thanks for watching guys.